So what is the plan for today? Maybe let's showcase this with something like draw.io so that you have an idea of what I'm actually planning to do today with you. All right. Why doesn't my scroll wheel work? Okay, scrolling in general doesn't work. All right. So the plan for today is the following. I have my client over here. My client is going to be this calling machine that I'm on. Not this one where I have my E3 settings done and I can do all these terminals with the Pokemons in them and all this fun stuff. So this is my client machine, which will do the heavy lifting most of the time. But as we've seen a couple of times right now, my client Kali machine is an ARM machine. All right. Okay. What does this mean? I have an ARM machine. This means sometimes I have some issues when I have to do Intel specific things. All right. So what do we do? about that. We set up an Intel machine. Wow, that was very anticlimactic. So I have my client Kali VM here, but I also plan on having, what's a good image for that? Just a server. On having a Kali minimal installation or Kali server installation. All right. Okay. So far we have a client Kali ARM based machine, a Kali server, an Intel based machine. Isn't it 86? You know what, I just write down Intel, so nobody will know that I don't know it. And we also need a Windows client, Intel-based. Because as you saw in the last challenge, I needed to make to, to reverse engineer a Windows library and I wasn't able to. So that's that. Now we have another couple of considerations before we can start digging into this whole thing. Namely, one, we need a server that will allow us to do some pen testing or bug bounty hunting or CTFs because obviously I cannot host the Kali server or the Windows client on my ARM based machine, right? It's just a different architecture and it probably won't work out. So I have two options. One is I have a server back there, which is just my old gaming rig, which has an AMD processor, which is not ARM based. It's Intel based. It's an AMD processor that's Intel based. Yeah, we're talking about the architecture, not the manufacturer here. And the other option is something that's maybe more approachable to all of you watching this, which is to host it somewhere in the cloud. Now, approachable may be a big word for this one, but I think hosting it on the cloud is cheaper in the beginning instead of having to purchase like all the computer components and setting up a server. Now, of course, if you have set up like an old laptop that you don't need anymore, you can do that on there. But then the question is, if you're having, if you're working on an old laptop that is Intel based, why not do everything on there, right? Why, why do this weird thing that we're about to do? Now, I want to do this in the cloud, so we're going to do it in the cloud. And I've also already pre-selected a cloud provider that should allow us to do some pen testing, which would be... Digital Ocean but Bounty Allow. Let's take a look at that. We have like best VPS for bug bounty programs. Um, Digital Ocean, Linode, Amazon, AWS, Microsoft Azure are all in there. Um, but I mainly use um, Digital Ocean for these things. And I also have an affiliate link for that. So this is the obvious choice for me to make it easier. With that out of the way, we will create a Terraform or OpenTofu setup that will automatically create this Kali server and this Windows client for us. Now, it may not sound like much, but you're forgetting that I have no idea how either of those actually work. The last time I used Terraform is like seven years ago or something like that. So it has changed name or it has changed from open source to being closed sourced in that time. So last time I used it, it was actually open source. Now Terraform is closed source. So we're going with open tofu, which is just the open source fork of Terraform. All right. So everything clear what the plan is for today. Then let me know in the chat what, uh, where you're watching this from. Just so we get some engagement and the 
algorithm promotes. So we have Konstantinos, which is from Greece, with the most Greek name I've ever seen in my chat. Glad to have you here on board. We'll start with step number one of each journey, which is to find out how to install Open Tool on Kali Linux, right? That's like the first step you do on this journey. Check. Boom. And then we have it over here in Linux. And also, how do you like my, my, my setup? I, I prepared it for today. Look. The browser is transparent. And also what I didn't show you is when I start burp after it started. Okay. Don't show again for this version. Close. All right. Even burp now is transparent on my system that I didn't know that was possible. So if I have a terminal next to it, boom, burp gets more transparent so I can enjoy the background image. Isn't that awesome? And the same actually for VS Code, so I can see my background image when I'm working. That's Linux Rising in a nutshell for you. Just put it free and make things transparent and then all fast fetch and then you have rised your machine. But let's go with the installation actually instead of just talking about random stuff that have nothing to do with the task at hand, which is we want to install the installers on the install script. Now I have prepared this data section, especially for this one. Let's remove tests. Boom. Let's paste this in here and then install. And, and now you can see it. Install was open tofu install map is deb, which uh, little known fact deb doesn't stand for Debian package. It's actually just a short form for Deborah. And that's jokes with Senate while setting up everything. Is it free to set up a lab in cloud? I think. I'm not sure anymore. My affiliate link gave you like a couple of credits for free. I can give you a $200 credit, which is only valid for the next 16 C days. And I'll get 25 bucks for that. So if you want to follow along, I have the affiliate link posted in the chat. And I will also add it real quick to the description. Open to boom. Open to boom. Not found. All right. Okay. It doesn't seem like the installation worked as expected. But let's do a getting started. Oh, so for those that don't know, Open Tofu is infrastructure as a code tool. I didn't even explain. It just occurred to me. I didn't even explain what the hell I'm doing. Now, we've discussed this plan in detail, right? Remember, why can't I move this around anymore? All right, like this. Remember this plan. Now, in order to keep the cloud costs down, I've had a genius idea. The idea is that I will just set up a whole infrastructure as code base, code base with open tofu so I can spin up this environment every time I do a CTF or every time I actually need it. Which means in turn, I don't need to pay a lot for this infrastructure because it's only going to be up for like maybe an hour or two at max or maybe four hours. So I can like save on cloud billing costs and just spin this whole entire infrastructure up when I need it. And for that, we're using open tofu. And I think, I think I didn't explain that, right? <laughs> All right. Now let's take a look at open tofu and how it actually works. Because as said, the last time I used open tofu was like five years ago. Something like that. The Open Tofu community have already written thousands of providers. Now, for those of you that don't know what a provider is, a provider is basically the API or interface that allows you to... Now, this was an interesting episode. If you want to watch the next one, you have to wait a week or become a member and watch it today. So what are you waiting for? Make sure to join the membership today so you get access to the full livestream VOD of that episode and all the other episodes that I've caught it out of this live stream.